Hi, I'm Bruce DeKine, a technical product manager at Logarithm, here to give you a demo of case automation through Smart Response. The goal of case automation is to help you reduce your alarm fatigue by automatically aggregating similar alarms into a single case and providing the context you need for fast decision making. We call this Security Made Smarter. So you come into the office Monday morning to find a bunch of new alarms around a threatless, suspicious IP. But notice how each is already associated with a case. The case smart response is taking care of that for us, so we can pivot to the cases tab and start there instead. There are only two cases here, grouped by the suspicious IP detected. Already I'm down from 18 alarms to investigate to two manageable cases. And let's just start with the first case. There's a ton of evidence already added by the case SRP. This case seems to have most of the new alarms, 17 by my count. We can go back and look at the evidence that was automatically added. First, threat intelligence. This IP address was reported by two of my providers as suspicious and phishing. Next, the rule block summary. This is created from AIE summary fields based on AIE drill down results and I immediately have visibility that each alarm was a different user, but visiting the same local curling league domain. So let's start investigating the IP address. Domain Tools seems to think it's a hosted web service IP address, which means it's shared between multiple sites. Recorded Future seems to have lowered the threat score, and it doesn't appear related to the curling domain. So finally, I'll use an online screenshot generator to view the URL, and it looks to be a legitimate site. So at this point, I'm pretty confident this is a false positive, and I'm going to close the case as completed, which means it was never an incident. I'll add a resolution note that it appears to be a false positive on a shared IP. And that gives me the option to bulk close all the associated alarms. With those 17 alarms taken care of, I can focus on that second case for the other IP which just contained one alarm. Before investigating, I'll show you the actions from the case SRP. First, we have add alarm to case, which created the case when it didn't find a matching one. Next, threat intelligence, then the alarm summary information, and finally, updating case earliest evidence timestamp, which ensures all your case metrics are accurate. It doesn't change the timestamp too much here, but it could, especially in something like a threshold AIE rule that accumulates data for a while before firing. So let's start the investigation with a drill down this time. But first, we'll take a quick look at the case in line view. We can see a different IP address and URL from the last case, and this time the IP is attributed to ransomware. A quick check of recorded future shows a pretty serious threat score. Now opening the drill down, we only see one firewall log from Jake's laptop to the IP. So let's run a pivot search and see what else is going on with Jake's laptop. Notice all these file modification events on the host. This is classic ransomware behavior, so now at this point I have enough information to move the case into incident so I can continue investigation and respond quickly. There's the power of smart response and the logarithm platform at work. Despite the false positive we discovered, this alarm has considerable value in discovering known threats. Instead of spending my entire morning digging through the new alarms, Smart response and case management enabled critical context, effective grouping, and fast triage so I can focus on incident response.